going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Please let me have your undivided attention. And the Word of God is being read. I'm going to ask that you would stand in reverence to our Holy God. The Word of God says in Psalm 111, beginning at verse 1, Praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with godly people. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. He gives food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. All he does is just and good. And all his commandments are trustworthy. They are forever true. To be obeyed faithfully with integrity. He has paid a full ransom for his people. He has guaranteed his covenant with them forever. What a holy, all inspiring name he has. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandment will grow in wisdom. Praise ye the Lord. Bow your head with us. Eternal and everlasting Father, thank you for allowing us to approach you in that awesome and mighty name of Jesus. And eternal God, as we come before your holy, righteous, and divine presence, we come with our hearts filled with gratitude and thanksgiving. Realizing that you are awesome. You are omnipotent. You are not present. You are immutable. You are the only true God. You are our high tower, our strong tower. You are our shield, our butler, a very present help in trouble. God is in you that we all live and we move. And we have our being. And without you, God, we can do nothing. But through you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. So we just want to say thank you this morning. Thank you, God, for your son and our Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the perfect Lamb of God who stepped down through 40 in two generations to redeem us, to save us, and to deliver us from the hand of the evil one. Thank you for Jesus shedding his precious blood on Calvary Cross that we may have a right to the tree of life. Thank you for Jesus going down in the shield and Hades and setting the captive free, taking the stain out of death the victory out of the grave. But on that third day, God, you raised him from the dead with all power in his hand. Jesus has ascended back into the heaven where he is now seated at your right hand of honor, interceded, represented us before you as our great high priest. For that, we say thank you for Jesus. God, we thank you for the gift and the power in the enlightenment of your Holy Spirit, our paraclete, 
our helper, our anointed. Thank you for your holy word. Your word, God, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. Your word, God, we have hid in our heart so we won't sin against our holy God. Thank you, God. God, we want to thank you for this veteran day. Thank you for our parents who have entrusted their children to come to a Christian school to teach their children God's way. Oh God, we thank you for them. We ask that you bless each one of our parents, grandparents and guardians and uncles and cousins and nephews and nieces, all kindred. Bless them individually and collectively. God, we want to thank you for our children. You told them to train them up in the way that they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart. For that we give you praise. God, we thank you for our staff, how they have fallen in love with these children, embrace them and love on them, teaching them the right way. Bless this program. Bless our veterans for the service and the sacrifice that they have given to this country. God, we love you now. Fill this house with your presence. Fill this house with your power. And we're going to be careful to give you all your glory and all of your honor. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. And all God's church, amen. amen. Let's give God a big hand clap for praise.
we, we will be led by the Star Sprinkle Banner by Miss Sanders and Company. If you would Good morning to each and every one. As you know, I'm Miss McCann, the kindergarten teacher. And um, I only have but a few to represent for us, but all of them is so great. We have Justice here. We have LaDasia. We have Melvin. And we have Chloe. And we have Harmony. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> and then we'll be going a welcome for you all. And I know y'all already feel welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Paris Innovative Appreciation Day. So watch, listen, and enjoy. Thank you. If you welcome, go and give a praise. So this sign is for you. So make sure y'all look at the signs real good and we mean every word of it. We love it. Thank you. <laughs> at this time we will have the occasion presented by Ms. KK Buzzy. Good morning. 
morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I am Kajana Bussey. I'm also known as KK. I'm the SGA president, and this is also my senior year at here at SL Jones Christian Academy. It is my pleasure to welcome all of our veterans to our Veteran and Parent Appreciation Day. Mm. A reminder to us all. Never forget your parents. They are the reason why you are and who you are. And to our brave veterans with respect, honor, and gratitude. Veterans are a symbol of what makes our nation great. And we must never forget all that they have done to ensure our freedom. Veterans, you are our heroes. You are in our thoughts. You are in our prayers for all you have done. Thank you. Thank you. In 1968, the Uniforms Holiday Bill ensured three-day weekends for federal employees by celebrating four national holidays on Mondays, Washington's Birthday, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and Columbus Day. Under this bill, Veterans Day was moved to the fourth Monday of October. Many states did not agree with this decision and continued to celebrate the holiday on its original date. The first Veterans Day under the new law was observed with much confusion on October 25th, 1971. Finally, on September 20th, 1975, President Gerald, R. President Gerald R. Ford signed a law which returned the annual observance of Veterans Day to its original date of November 11th, beginning in 1978. Since then, the Veterans Day holiday has been observed on November 11th. Thank you. And if I can get all of my veterans in the room to stand at this time, if you are Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Army, if you're a veteran today, we have one, myself, I'm Navy, anyone else? Let's give us a hand clap of praise. And I'm going to need 
Mom. Thank you, Dad. By second grade, we appreciate you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. This mother so much to add. For all your love, a million words will be too short. The words I love say to you, to express the love I have for you. Mountains, majesty, above all fruit and 
morning, everyone. Um, this is my fourth, well, fifth grade class, and I have Isaiah, Demetrius, Shanti, and Amon. I mean, the age is going to be doing a poem for the parents representing our fifth grade class. Thank you. Parents, there are little eyes upon us, and they are watching night and day. There are little ears that quickly take in every word you say. There are little hands all eager to do everything you do. And a little boy who's dreaming the other day, he'll be like you. Yet a little fellow's idol, you're in the wide of the wide, and his little mind about you, no suspicions ever arise. He believes in you devoutly, holds that all you say and do will say and do in your way when he grows up like you. Right. There's a wide-eyed little fellow who believes you're always right and his ears are always open and he watches day and night. You are saying the same example every day and all you do for the little boys who is waiting to grow up to be just like you.
Good morning, my name is Serenity Polk, and we are in Ms. Walker's 8th grade classroom, and we are going to be reciting a poem called Special People. Grandparents are special people with wisdom and pride. They are always offering love and kindness, and are always there to guide. They often make us feel so confident and strong, their arms are always open no matter what we get wrong. They try to help out in any way that they can. They love all of their grandchildren, whether you're a child, woman, or man. They're always there to listen and lend a helping hand. They show you respect and they try to understand. They give their love, devotion, and so much more that you can see. Grandparents are the perfect example of the kind of person you should be. You love our
and to go and be educated as well as worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because without God, we can't do anything. We move and we have all our will be because of who Jesus is, not because of anything that we do. Amen? About 29 years ago, I woke up about 4 o'clock in the morning, November 29, 1989, and I was scared out of my mind. I forgot I had joined the United States Air Force. But early that morning, by the sound of what I thought was the end of the world, my drill instructor came in banging on a trash can. And I screamed at the top of my voice. What have I gotten myself into? That was my first experience with the United States military. But 29 years later, I just want to share with you all some core values that the military instilled in me that at 50 years old, I'm still using these core values. I use them in my everyday life. I use them as a preacher. I use them as a Christian. And I also use them as a teacher and a coach. The military has been good to me. I served the military for 14 years. And the only reason why I'm not in right now is because of our current commander in chief. <laughs> All right. All right. And, and that's the truth. And that's what God loves. But I, I have every intent to get back in if we go out and vote the next election cycle to end my military career. Uh, and retire. But these core values, these 14 years that I've been in the military, has stuck with me. Number one, I, I learned order. You know, that's a divine word, order. God does everything decent and in order. And I didn't know it at the time, but, you know, my military career was prepare me to be a Christian. You know, I preach, and I pastor our congregation here in Pensacola, but you don't have to be a good preacher to get to heaven, but you definitely have to be a good Christian. And to be a good Christian, you got to know a little something about order and decency. And children, no matter what age you are, you need to understand this core value of order. It's a divine principle that would help you in life and would also help save your life. Right. Another value I learned was the most important value of the handful of values I'm gonna give you. Discipline. 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 I learned how to move when somebody says move. Some of us, we, we, we like discipline, and y'all scream at Coach Mill and Coach Mill, Coach Mill, stop yelling. Well, I wouldn't have to yell if you would do what I tell you. All right. The Come first on, time. Right? Amen. You know, in the military, there's no debate. There's no, well, hold on. You move when they say move. Amen. You eat when they say eat. Amen. You go to sleep. When they say go to sleep, you put things up when they say put it up. You know, and this one carries over into my Christian life. I recognize that in Hebrews chapter 12, around verse 11, the Holy Spirit deals with this. Discipline at the moment, nobody wants it. At the moment, nobody wants to be yelled at at Coach Mill. At the moment, nobody wants to refer. At the moment, nobody wants to go see Mr. Leatherwood and ISS. For the moment, nobody wants to go see past and get three, five, or ten days home. But chastening for the moment may not be what you want. But you just stay in line with discipline. The effects and the fruits of discipline 
will rear you up to be a righteous person. Will rear you up to be a good student. Will rear you up to be a good athlete. Will rear you up to be a good parent. Will rear you up to be a good person in this here society of the United States of America. But we need discipline. Yes. Especially in the black community. Amen. 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 Especially with our young black males. Amen. Amen. Especially with our young black females. Amen. 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 And especially with our parents. Amen. Amen. With our discipline. With our education. Malcolm X says, you're not going anywhere in life. Amen. So many of my friends so many of your friends, so many of my family members, so many of your family members Amen. are dead, are locked up, Amen. are walking the street because of a lack of discipline. Amen. Amen. Another value of my handful of values that the military instilled in me was honor. Honor goes along with respect. That's right. Yeah. That's right, you will never be honored unless you have the discipline yeah. to be able to honor those who deserve to be honored. Yeah. This is a biblical principle. Yes. For the Bible says, honor your father and your mother that your days yeah. may be longer. That's right. The military from day one, soon as you get off that bus, and meet your drill instructor. All right. They give you a panel. Mm -hmm. And it spells out the chain of command. Right. From the man that's in front of you all the way up to the White House. All right. All right. And you learn how to honor those who deserve to be honored first before anybody respects you. Yeah. Nowadays, we got it all twisted. We want respect first. Yeah. And we haven't shown any type of honor yeah. to those who we need to be respecting first. Right. Another thing, another value, and this kind of brings out the OCD in me. Right. Attention to detail. When you do your lesson, when you are you get ahead is you have to pay attention to detail. If your reward is greater than you paying attention to detail, you're gonna miss the mark. Because you're so concerned about the reward, but you're not paying attention to the detail. When you live your life as a good Christian, there's a lot of work to do on this side of life before you can jump around and say hallelujah on high, worrying about getting into heaven. There's a lot of work to do in the sixth grade, in the seventh grade, in the eighth grade, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, and including you see, you ain't graduated yet. If you don't pay attention to detail and follow the school rules, you may not make it to graduation day. You have to pay attention to detail. When teachers tell you a particular thing, that's how a teacher wants it. When I was in the military, I couldn't do it my own way. It's not like Burger King. You can have it your way at Burger King, but in the United States military, you better do it according to every detail that they prescribe you to do a particular task. If not, you're going to start all over. Another core value that is very important to me that I learned in the military is resilience. Let me give you the definition that Webster gives us of, of, of resilience. Resilience, by definition, is uh, the capacity to recover quickly. The capacity to recover quickly from 
any and all difficulties. My, my, my. If you have no difficulties in life, please raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so that means that everybody has difficulties. Yes. Preachers got difficulties. Yes. First ladies got difficulties. Yes. Teachers have difficulties. Yes. Coaches have difficulties. Yes. Your parents have difficulties. Yes. You know how difficult it is to raise you? <laughs> you know how difficult it is? I like to eat. But the difficulty is that my kids and my wife have something to eat before I do. That's a very difficult decision, you want. Ask them so. Come on, son. Resilience, y'all. Resilience. You have to recover quickly. You don't have time to be pouting. You don't have time to be complaining. You don't have time to be murmuring. Because life is going on, y'all. People are pass you up in life. You have to be resilient. A F don't take you out the game. A F just says, I need to try hard. That's right. That's right. Failure don't end the game. No. You just make it get it better the next time you have an opportunity. Right. But you have to recover quick. And last but not least, because this only gave you 10 minutes. <laughs> Teamwork, y'all. Right. Teamwork, family. Unity, togetherness, yeah. we need that, y'all. Yeah. Teamwork. We work as a team in the classroom. Yeah. Teaching and what? Learning. It's a team effort. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that there was some teamwork going on early on in my Bible. Yeah. It says that the people of the world got together and worked as a team. Yeah. They worked so diligent as a team that God had to intervene and stop. Yeah. God said they worked so good as a team that if we don't intervene and stop them, that what they have started to do, they'll build that tower all the way to heaven. And God confounded their land. Teamwork is essential. Yes. But the first thing you have to recognize in order to understand the importance of the core value of teamwork is you got to get on the right team. Some of us are working more for the team of Satan than the team of Jesus. Many are called, but few are chosen. Because we concentrate too much of our effort working for the wrong team. Yes, so I hope and pray that these five values of order, discipline, resilience, honor, teamwork will help you out. No matter where you are in life. Yes. From 12 years old to 80 years old. Yes. These values are not only good values that I learned in the United States military, right. but there are also core values of God that's helping me make it to heaven. Amen. Thank y'all for your time. This is a good, beautiful opening. Amen.
faculty here at Enzo Jones Christian Academy. I'm proud to be the president of the board of directors, and I ask that you continue to pray for me at the school. Uh, the song was saying, I got a feeling that the thing will be all right. It's already all right. Amen. Tell somebody it's already all right. People try to put down the schools and the faculty, but God knows what's best, and it's already all right. So I thank you for coming, and enjoy your day. Let the church say amen. If you are blessed today, give God a hand. Give a praise. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. You have to be very careful what you ask God for. Because you know what? You will get it. I ask the Lord to fill this house with his prison, with his power, with his anointing. Did y'all see what happened? Let's give God some praise by church. This is what we do here at Israel Jones Christian Academy. Amen. Amen. Some 24 years ago, uh, God, I was sitting in my desk at church. And I said, Lord, I, I know you sent my wife and my family here from Antigua, West Indies, for purpose. We were trying to debate why we was overseas in the military. My wife I had just about completed 17 years in the Navy as a lieutenant commander. And uh, she was on her last leg. We had left Washington, D.C. And we went to Antigua. Now we have completed three years over there, and we wanted to come back to Florida. But a detailer told her that it would be impossible that she would get, uh, what is it? Orders. They call it some mess. All right, she said orders. Uh, to come to Florida. We didn't want to go back to Washington, D.C., because we had, I've been there for 25 years teaching and uh, sharing. So I wanted to come to my home state. And so just about two weeks prior to us coming back from overseas, she got orders to come to Pensacola. And the Lord sent us here in 1991. And we have been here ever since. I was asking God, I said, God, you said that the steps of a good man are ordered by you. So I asked now, God, did you give me my orders? Listen to me. If you want the Lord to bless you, I want y'all to hear me. Every morning before you get up, get down on your knees and ask God. I said, God, I want you to give me your order. I want my orders. Because if it's my order, it'll be out of order. Y'all say amen. But see, you can't go wrong when you get orders from God. Why? Because he is the great commander. He is the owner of the world. The Bible says the earth is the Lord. In the fullness, there are the world and they that dwell there and all belong to God. Yeah. How many of y'all believe that? Hallelujah. Don't you know that you belong to God? Yeah. Yeah. And he's the only one can give us our order. I ask God, I said, fill this house. God bless my parents. Bless my parents. That my parents will teach our children in the way that they should go. And when they grow up, they will not depart. When they bring them and trust them into our game, help us to do the same thing. Why? Because it takes a village. Y'all see me? It takes a village to raise these children. All of us got a part to play in the lives 
of these children in order for them to be productive yes. and Christian children, young people one day. Say amen. amen. So that's what we're about. Ain't nobody mad at him but the devil. Amen. Say amen. amen. We're going to keep him mad. Yeah. And so that's why they try to talk about Israel Job, but they don't know what goes on in this group. Uh -huh. Glory of God is in this group. Yeah. Isn't that why the devil hate us? Yeah. But that's all right. We're going to keep on keeping on because we're going to do what God has commanded us to do. Amen? Amen. Again, parents, children, let's give our parents another hand to have a great. Thank you. Thank you. We're getting ready to leave, but we're going to have our children to go back with their teachers to their classroom so that Listen to me. We'll get my way. So that we're going to start from our K-4s, kindergarten, first grade, and right on up to the 12th grade to get them to gold plate. Now listen, parents. You can't take your children home with you. <laughs> Help me save some gas in this place. Y'all say amen. amen. You, you don't have to leave it. You can't take it. But if you leave it, I'll bring them home. Say amen. amen. But uh, <laughs> so we're going to do that. We're going to ask everybody when we, when we give you orders to teach you, take your student back to your class, sit them down, and we will dismiss them from there, get their lunch, and you can go home. But uh, let me, please don't move yet. Please don't move. All right, I'm going to let Miss Dill, she has an announcement, and then we're going to ask God blessing on the food, and we're going to dismiss you. Um, just something, this is not on the program. I'm going to ask my friend, Pastor Willoughby, to come up, and I'm going to ask her to come pray. You know, this past week, there's been shooting and killing in our communities, where our children are now shooting one another, our children are shooting policemen, our children are disrespecting, and they don't know it, but the enemy is having a field day in our community. And it is upon us to pray for them. So I want to take a minute, if you would, it may be your relatives, because many of us know the children that are involved. Many of us know the families that are involved. We're going to take a moment. We're going to ask Pastor Willoughby if she would just pray for our community and our children. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 